back because we're on the steering wheel. Look, indicators, lights, wipers off. Uh, push, pull, pull, got it. Contamination off the panoramic roof. This is the clay bar stage, the third and final decontamination part. Uh, that's caught the rubber there, the black part that you can see the brown tarnishing. Most of that's off the glass. Contamination off the bonnet, half the bonnet. What I'm going to do is flip reverse the clay to the brand new unused side and see if there's any left remaining. On the air, I've already done. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Polishing, but the final thing for the car is to just go over with an isopropyl alcohol. It's a paint degreaser just to remove any smears, smudges, wash residue, water spots, just so we can inspect the paint thoroughly uh, before we go under the lights. Right, okay, that is the paintwork wiped down. The paintwork is blown to eliminate all the trapped water, the drips from the crevices, the badges, the side grills, the mirrors, all the intricate spots, the wheels. This wheel has been left to one side. This is going away for refurbishment. It's been clouted a good few times, unfortunately. So that's gonna be disappearing very soon. The rest of the wheels are coming in. Was it much on there, Terry, tar? Oh, not really. So what do we know? I believe the vehicle is a 2013, 2014. It's covered 19,000 miles already. Looking at some, lots of bug etchings on the front, chemicalized bud splats from high impacts, high speed impact. The usual sort of swirling over the bonnet. There's a deeper scratch there in the middle. I think Terry picked up some deeper scratches up here. Yeah, there, during the clay bar stage. It's put for the white detail, a major paint correction detail with all of the trimmings, the trimmings being the wheels off work, the engine bay, the full interior treatments, the full upgraded ceramic paint protection package to protect the investment with the work. But on the most part, we have at least three days polishing ahead to get this back to where it really sort of deserves to be. Oh, there's a blend on the bumper here. All right, okay, there, track the lights, you see the edge mark coming down the side of the bumper. Nice blend, something's been painted. Where does that blend? Deeper scratches here. Uh, that's the previous location from the registration plate. 
overspray where that's been, so the previous, when the bumper's been painted, whatever this overspray here is for, they've left the registration plate on. Our customer is okay with us leaving the plate and visible on this car that's well and truly stuck and it's a sort of one-time um, one time application to work around it. But when that's been painted, there's a masking mark overspray there. This is odd as well. I spotted the washer jet here, this is gloss, and it's missing a chunk of lacquer. So the offside is gloss. This side seems to be matte. Is that just weathered? Will it polish? Is it meant to be polished? I've used this example before, but using the lights direct onto the paint, you see the swirling in the general haze, but if you come top down, you see the deep scratches. So that scratch above the door lock there, under this light, it's sort of there, but it blends in. It's difficult to, for your eyes to pinpoint. But you come down at an angle, scratchy scratch, scratchy scratch. Oh, another weird spot up on the roof line here, a blend. See that? It's a really small blend. One nice thing for us in this car is the roof is glass, so the entire roof, front to the spoiler, or the boot section there, is all glass. Doesn't need polishing. Scratchy scratch. Here, near side front wing, scratchy scratch and the swirls. Oh, clusters of overspray. One, two, three, four. I feel a bit out of practice doing this, it's been a while. Uh, the last couple of episodes, which were well over a month or so ago now, were variety vlogs. So they were various vehicles over 30 minutes over, filmed over two or three weeks. But this is just gonna be the Ferrari. And if you've been here before, if you've seen some of the earlier episodes, you may recognize the car anyway. I followed this car, I was invited to go assessed this car at the British Car Auctions in Nottingham. This was a, an auction purchase. Uh, that was early June, perhaps. And now it's finally on the operating table, ready for some loving.
Good afternoon, Monday, day one, August 19th. Right, so the door. Working with the Rupes LHR75 Mini, the 15 LHR15 ES Bigfoot. That's not the hybrid, where's the hybrid? And the hybrid. By the way, Rupes, if you want to sponsor one of these videos, feel free. The door, uh, yet to, it looks kind of decent under this light. Uh, I've just done some finger polishing and the tip of the machine, the hybrid has got into the finger recess there. Some deeper stretches in the back, which has just been pulled out. I'm now about to break into the big pads, the five inch and the three inch to work. Uh, how will I do this? I guess really I could separate. That's flat enough on the top to use the five inch pad and then pick up on the three inch pad just for the edges and the edge work, which is normal. So I'll probably do half of the door there as one, lower half two, three. Uh, it's getting tricky that with a five inch, the five inch isn't gonna do what it needs to with these convex. One, two, three, from here to halfway with the three inch, from there to halfway with the three inch. Four, five, and then the edges. So getting on eight or nine individual polishing sets to cut the door. What's it look like under the light, condition wise? Uh, again, using the top down technique with the light from earlier. There's a deeper stretch there, it's gonna need more than just the one cut. The majority of this is going to be improved and enhanced easily with just one cut. The clearing pass, this is the finish on the rear wing after the cutting, multiple passes. The clarity on the before panel, on the door with the swirls, clarity is actually better to remove the damage and the swirls and the paint defects. We've got to do some cutting and the cutting can decrease the clarity, but of course, that is going to improve with the refining once we get the rest of the cutting complete. We'll then backtrack to refine to get the clarity back from these panels. So really most of this looks pretty light, wash marring and swirls, but underneath there, uh, there are deeper stretches hidden beneath. The vertical one there that's running on the right hand side of the light, chances are that isn't gonna come out with the single pass from the cutting. And then of course it's getting into the very top corners underneath these edges and angles. Sunday. I had to put a post on Instagram if you follow one details on Instagram. If you don't, be sure to check it out for behind the scenes, daily insights and updates. I had to make a post saying, I don't mean to be rude, but it is simply impossible for me to respond to all of the help me and advice needed messages. It may be a phone call, it may be a direct message, email or text, but as of today, I will only reply if it's a white details work related inquiry. I will, however, reply to all direct messages, no matter how big or small, on the White Details Patreon support page. This has been a long time coming. I'm sorry, but White Details is not a detailing support channel. For more information on the Patreon network, swipe up. Um, there is information on Patreon down below in the description, should you want to be part of the community. And it has been a case of, I'm a fool, and there's maybe four or five messages, text, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, voicemails, phone calls, email, four or five a day. Maybe it doesn't sound like a lot, but you'll get a voicemail saying from a hobbyist detail or even a professional detail. Let's say the Ferrari is playing up and it's not responding very well, let's phone Jim and get Jim's view of Jim doesn't know everything to be honest either. Um, but I can't, I can't get back to everyone as much as I'd like to and as much as I enjoy giving to the community and the support, the community, what it means to me. I felt a bit sour having to say it, but it needed to be said. I need to look after myself. So if you do have a series of questions or topics on your mind, then please feel free to support my details via YouTube, via the Patreon via the Patreon and my detail support page where I will respond to all DMs, direct messages. So from now, I hate to be blunt, but if it's not a 
email that's beneficial to our details, uh, work-related inquiry, then unfortunately, unfortunately, I won't be able to respond. While you're here, I've left that. Do you want to bash that a bit more? It's right um, with the bleeding eye line on How much have you given it? I haven't done it with this, so I could give it another bash there, but yeah, I'll give, give it, it two, two or three. It's, uh, give it two or three small ones, the hybrid. This isn't a bad place, door, driver's door. Right in here. Ibrids has developed a bit of an intermittent speed controller switch problem where it was just on or off. No, it wasn't quite on or off, it was somewhere in the middle. Very frustrating, so that's done away. Um, having to share one hybrid, which we've done in the past, it just means I'll work the three inch or the five inch as Terry's doing some intricate spots, we'll switch reverse and then I'll grab the hybrid. There's a lot of hybrid work to do on the front end here. I've done the three inch, the bulk, the flanks on the side over the top. Doing some hand polishing, the hybrid isn't going to sit in most of these anyway. I can probably tuck it in some of the entrances to the sides there, but uh, hand polish, hand polish, hand polish, hand polish, hand polish, hybrid, hybrid, hand polish underneath, and then we've got some work to polish on the underside. As far as the bumper is concerned, I've got to revisit this mark up here. There's a scratch there. If I can afford to chase that further, I will. Bottom offside corner, there's some stretches there as well. I need to try and chase them. Pretty deep. 
and then the blend mark that's here and there's not a lot to do to this to be honest this has had a light cut it's had a light cut <laughs> sorry uh, but that's pretty much there to stay unfortunately why that has been blended there and not all the way up who knows I am beginning to wonder if Usually, of course, before polishing areas like this, we tape up the grill, the vent, the mesh, whatever. But I'm wondering if it's actually worth it. You can see it's a little bit tarnished and flaky away. So do I really want to put tape on there to polish this and then pull the tape off and pull loads of the silver paint off? The near side's pretty bad. But the offside looks like it's new, to be honest. It looks like that's uh, pretty decent, so no worries this side. But with a bit of control, it shouldn't uh, cause any damage anyway, so carry on regardless. As beautiful staff. Is it a beautiful staff, Terry? Can't hear me. Checking the last remaining scratch up there on the top of the front bumper. There is a good 90 microns of lacquer, which is nice to see. So we're gonna hit that again, hopefully chase it out. Front end's been painted from the wings, the bonnet, the bumper. I think it was about 270's thickness total, but 90 of which is the top lacquer layer. The hybrid is all yours, Squire. The hybrid is all yours. From what it was down to that little impression now, normal lights outside. That's so rounded off, it's gonna be impossible to see. A Before we get on to the refining stage now, the cutting is 98% complete. We want to uh, amendments to make the back end of the bumper. It's time to dress the engine bay. Do this now because there is a splash. There's a bit of overlap, there's a bit of overspray. All right, go. And it's worth doing it now before the paint refines. Then there's the chance to damage the paint with the wiping down. You'll see what I spray going down, you've seen the blower, you've seen the hand agitation to push it into the areas. The idea of the blower is getting the product, the chemical, the coat, the dressing into the intricate spots which is very difficult to do by hand. The reason we do this at this point before refining is the car is now at its messiest. Look at all the overspray. The greasy overspray from the splashing about the engine bay which isn't a problem. At this point the car is yet to be refined as I say, so how do we have refined this to try and tackle the engine bay in this fashion, which is a, an efficient way of doing it for the engine, not so much the rest of the car. During the cleanup operation now, there would be a high chance of marring somewhere the paint, but yet to be refined, so it's not a problem. We can close the bonnet to remove the tape that doesn't need to be there, pan and wipe the car, spray the whole car down to start fresh, start refining.
these headphones are <laughs> anything other than completely vertical. You want to fall off. If you're sat on a train, they're great. But if you're out walking about or at the gym, Ooh. speaking of which, two pickery indicates near the end of the job. Thank you to customer Mr. McMillan for dropping off. Uh, he had a 5 Series last week. And in the boot there was a Scottish hamper. The whole Scottish selections. Not so much Scottish. Shortbread, toffee, fudge, jam. It's past approaching one o'clock. Wednesday. Wednesday the 21st. Refinement is complete. Paint's looking excellent, looking ultra sharp. Super, super sharp, super metallic. Refined beautifully, actually, no issues. Ready for some coatings, or at least it will be. You've seen me go around with a toothpick. Toothpickery is done, it needs a wipe down and touch ups before coatings. Terry's on the wheels. I've just missed the. Uh, is this one not been done yet? The wheels need some attention to remove remove the wheel weight glue from previous balancing sessions. Here's one we've done earlier. Coated inside and out with carbon collectives, platinum wheels. After that, the calipers will be polished and sorted. There's some dirty bits on the intricate areas. Down the bottom here, it'll be nice to get inside of there, a bit polished up. Get the cotton buds out, clean this ledge up a bit. Get them coated. One or two, one or two bangs on here as well where the wheels have previously been caught. Pretty much finished in here. What will happen is the underside of the bonnet will be tripled, it'll be auto finesse triple polished by hand. Uh, and then these sills, uh, I'm gonna de-gunk the glass now, de-gunk just to get all the dust, the polish, the smeary engine dressing. Uh, yes, you could glass clean these with a normal glass cleaner, but with the polish and certainly the engine dressing, you're contaminating your cloths, so you're gonna be working with dirty cloths. So what I'll do is for now, I'll just use a multi-purpose cloth with an IPA, just to take the excess off before we do some finesse cleaning, uh, perhaps tomorrow. That's the other side of there cleaned for now. It's an area that doesn't really get cleaned during the weekly wash because it's so low down. So now it's gonna be dressed at the later stage. <laughs> now we're doing some caliper polishing. <laughs> All right, well, after a full night on charge, the vehicle now, uh, not far from finished to be honest, got the full interior to do, and starting this in a second. As you can see really, it's pretty nice, it's pretty clean to begin with. One thing that will assist in interior clean on this, as always, is an airline, an airline to get into the intricate spots, the cubby areas, pick out some of the crumbs from the hard to reach spots. Full vac, blow the grovises, 
do the surfaces, the door cards, the panels, the console, armrest in the back. TV's in the back. There's a bit of carbon there on the AirPods. Oh, and how nice is the roof, full roof. Clean over the leather, protect. Protect the leather. And then polish up some of the carbon fiber. Should be nice and straightforward. We have also polish ready to go on. Pranks and holes front and rear polished up as well as the grill here on the front end. And the calipers have been polished, coated, and the aluminium bell around the disc there also coated, polished, sorry. protection that's now the interior done I'm gonna get all the rest of the dirty steerage jobs done which didn't say dirty 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 work is done but next I'm gonna dress the trim the exterior plastics the plastic size here and then the diffuser splitter section at the back that goes deep underneath Change the music as well, now switching over to third eye blind. One pipette, one cut down section of clean the old to my fiberglass. And then for the trim, for the trim actually gonna use Kamikaze ISM coat. No expense spared for this one. Wow, just got the 99th Patreon sign up to the White Eaters account. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much. Jonathan is actually the first of a possible six patrons to sign up for the $100 tier, which is the white way tier, which is basically, we chat. We chat once a month on the phone, Skype, FaceTime, bit of a mentoring, help me help you scenario. So Jonathan. Congratulations for being the first, uh, and thank you. Start right for you. Switching to GoPro 3, 2, 1. It's 
Like new. So the idea of this ISM coat and it's gonna keep the surface dark, it's gonna keep it looking sharp. It's gonna repel water to make it easy to wash because this isn't the easiest area to get a washing me down into and sort of it's just a bit fiddly. And it's gonna stay clean and longer because with that high viscosity, it's gonna repel the dirt. Behind the camera, Zapanko Sills and Shorts glass interior shiny bits. We're finished. As part from the apart from the near side front wheel, that's due to be back in tomorrow. So I guess I wait for that. Get the tire dressed. 
and then I'll film the film the after footage. If it's your first time here, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for future content. Be sure to dig back in the archives for plenty more video content. Head over to Instagram for daily behind the scenes and updates. Thank you to the Y Details patrons as always. Take care, and I'll see you again soon. Ah, scrap the idea of the wheel refurbishment. The same wheel is back. The same wheel is still damaged. Ah. It's a long story, it's out of my doing. The customer chose to take it somewhere, somewhere I can't do it for various reasons. So it, ha it now has to be done next week sometime, but I need the ramp back. So the wheel's back to get the car on the floor, to put the car in the garage, to get the car up on axle stands, to then go again next week with an alternative option. That was all really, just to let you know that the wheel is still damaged, so do consider that when you see the after footage, which starts now. Mm -hmm.